It is an honor and it's a privilege to call upon Rabbi Foyle to, ad to address this distinguished gathering. Dear family and friends, the term guest of honor is misleading because it indicates that I am here to receive honor from others. I will accept the term, but not the definition. Instead, I view it as a chance to pay tribute to those who have inspired me. You see, much of what I get credit for has nothing to do with me and everything to do with my parents. A young couple who lived in a tiny apartment in Lakewood more than 70 years ago. They were young in one sense, but old in what they had already experienced. Both of them had endured challenges, but that was not visible to the onlooker. They lived with sacrifice, and getting through each day took resilience and strength, but that too was not visible to the onlooker. In my parents' home, you saw mysterious nefesh and the satisfaction that comes with a life connected to Limit Atira. Life was not easy but it was a life filled with purpose and meaning. If there was a theme, a mantra, it was, Ashrenu Matayv Chalkeinu, how lucky we are. Being exposed to the truth early on allowed me to recognize and appreciate what is really MS. I always felt drawn to people who exuded and embodied that same sense of pride and happiness who lived with the same song of Ashrena Matai Chalkeinu that I had seen at my home. HaKadosh Baruch has been very good to me. I was like to marry a wife who also grew up in such a home with parents who exemplified these qualities, allowing us to build a home together using this mantra as its foundation instilling in our children 
these very precious values that we both saw at home. I remember the first time I met Rav Nassim Tzvi Zetzal. He exuded that incredible spirit and inner joy. If all you saw was a man who struggled to walk, if all you saw was a man who had difficulty speaking, then you really didn't see him at all. He burned with energy, determination, vision, and so much Simcha Sachayim. If you truly saw him, then you just wanted to be close to him. You wanted to partake in whatever it was that he was doing. As we saw in the video, our relationship started slowly. My dear friend and partner, Howard Zuckerman, Allah Shalom, made the initial introduction. Howard had an eye for greatness, and his admiration for the Rosh Hashiva was contagious. The Rosh Hashiva was in Brooklyn one evening and was scheduled to have a meeting, and it got canceled at the last minute. He was clearly under pressure, and immediately with my wife's blessing and encouragement, we invited him to our home when we asked some of our friends to come and our friends and colleagues came together to help the yeshiva. That was the beginning of this relationship close to 30 years ago. It's difficult for me to express what it was about that was so captivating about Reb Nassim Svi, but I will let the following story speak for itself. In the late 1990s, the Rashiva's physical well-being was already beginning to deteriorate. But he somehow radiated incredible power and strength, delivering daily shirim, a weekly shir klali, and numerous chaburis. He learned b'chavrusa with anyone that asked him, and said shmuzin in two languages every Friday, all while presiding over and carrying the financial burden of the yeshiva with thousands of Talmidim. The annual Hanukkah Masiba was a rare opportunity for the Talmidim as they gathered together in one room with their beloved Rebbe. When he came into the dining room, the wall shook with the song of the Talmidim. The Rosh Hashiva slowly made his way to the head table. He sat down and looked around with that special glow we all remember, his eyes dancing with Simcha Sachayim. He tried to speak, but as hard as he tried, his body failed him, and he was unable to. But as those who witnessed the scene recall, his loving smile was better than any drasha. The Rosh Hashiva Rabbi Yitzchak Yitzrachi Shlita did get up to speak, but he did not speak long. Instead, he expressed the question that hung over the room. What is the secret of Nassim Svi? His appeal, his bond, his connection and effect on the Talmidim. How could it be that a physically sickly man was so vibrant and strong? Rabbi Yitzchak quoted a Pasuk in Zechariah, Loi b'chayil, lo b'koach, ki em beruchi, am Hashem tzvakas. Not through armies and not through might, but through my spirit, says Hashem. That was the answer, ki em beruchi, with my spirit. When the spirit is strong, then there is no need for might, for the spirit is stronger than any force outside of that. Rav Nassim Tzvi was the Ish Haruach, and the Spirit still fills the holy walls of the yeshiva every single day. Remember, dear friends, remember that dark day when we awoke to learn that Reb Nassim Tzvi had left us. It was a hammer blow to the heart. The Rosh Hashiva was gone. It seemed inconceivable. But Reb Nassim Tzvi's life had been a message that the impossible 
is possible. And what happened next reflected that. It made no sense. It still makes no sense. Ki in Baruchi. Look around tonight. Take a good look around this room. Or better yet, try to make it a point when you're in a Yisrael to walk up the stairs of the Mir Yeshiva during first Seder and look around that room. And you will feel that you have to make a bracha. Sha'asa nisim lavaisenu bayamim ahem bazman hazeh. It's a nest, and tonight we say, thank you, Hashem, for that nest. <laughs> Dear Abnas and Svi, let me tell you what has transpired over the last 10 years. Yuschus, that atmosphere that you created, Rosh Yeshiva, hovers over the yeshiva like one of the Anani HaKavayt. The yeshiva that, into which you breathe life created not only Yisachas and Zvulins, but something else as well. Talmidim who learned under you, and even those who had not had the schus to learn under you, have stepped forward, right, raising money with the focus and determination of Zvulins, but yet with the Ahavas Atira of Yisacha, fueled not by just fundraising goals, but by pure Ahavas Atira, driven by their love for their yeshiva, as they too are all B'nai Taira. You would be so proud of those ambassadors, young Balabatim who represent yeshiva with such distinction. When my phone rings late at night, my face lights up, because I know it's the Mir guys, whether it's Adrian, Ezra, Zevi, Davi, calling to report on their latest fundraising successes. <laughs> Rosh Hashiva, over the last 10 years, those Talmidim have transformed the Chazakah's entire landscape. They created a circle of friends of this yeshiva, and by extension, other yeshivas, that would make you so proud. People experiencing that special satisfaction and sense of fulfillment for the schus of just supporting Tyra. To you, of and Svi, it made no difference which yeshiva, as long as it was pure Tyra. It made no difference what the product was and who was selling it, as long as it was true Tyra. In discussing Harzakah Zatayra, I have to mention what is schuss it is for me to share this honor with my dear friend, Rabbi Shlomo Yehuda. <laughs> like you, Rabbi Nassim Tzvi, he thinks so much bigger than any other people, fusing generosity and vision with such heart. When others step back during difficult times, you shlam you to take your giving to the next level, funding extra stipends and additional programs when they are needed most. That's why you are Chad Badaira, one in our generation. You obligate each one and every one of us to do so much more because you are always doing so much more. Rosh Hashiva, from the moment the Shiva ended, we no longer had the luxury to mourn because the Avaidah was too great. There's been your Rebetzin, the Aim HaYeshiva, Rebetzin Leia, who inspires us with her seichel and her nobility. Rav Nassim Tzvi, it is your Bechar, Maran HaRav Leblezi Yudel, the Rosh Shiva Shlita, who has led us through this extraordinary decade. He immediately reflected your courage and valor, rising up to his position and again and again. There have been many challenges, financial upheavals, tragedies, wars, 
And a yeshiva that didn't just survive COVID, it transformed it into an opportunity to create real Ahavas Taira. During the course of the last decade, Rabbi Lazi Yudel has continued growing the yeshiva with many new Bate Midrashim and Chaburis, elevating the yeshiva steadily and diligently, including new programs and continuous uninterrupted Taira learning and encouraging the writing of Chidush Taira for hundreds of hundreds of Talmidim, accomplishing this all by giving of his heart and his soul. And as the Rashiva study and we saw all those volumes, Ashracha, what we have so much to be grateful for. The Gemara Megillah refers to Abayas Agadol, a great house. There is a machlaikas between the Yechina of Yeshua ben Levi, with one saying it refers to a house in which Megadlu by Tyra, and one saying Megadlu by Tvila. Either way, we see that the term Gadol does not just mean to be great, it means the ability to create greatness. A Gadol doesn't merely rise to greatness, but he also makes others great along with him. That was you, Reb Nassim Svi. We know your story, how you arrived in Eretz Yisrael on a visit at the age of 14. And we're enthralled by your great uncle, Reb Lazy Yudel, who wanted you to stay and learn Tyra. Your parents weren't enthusiastic, but on Rosh Hashanah, your mother heard the Kriya Satyra, the story of the Akeda, and it stirred her. She understood that it was a timeless call for a Yiddish mama, and she agreed to let you stay the winter, a decision that altered the course of history. Many years later, after the story was well known, someone asked you, we know the Rosh Hashiva's mother's Mesiris Nefesh was, but what was the Rosh Hashiva's Mesiris Nefesh? What did the Rosh Hashiva have to give up to stay and learn Tyra? Your answer of Nassensi was, I sent my cub's cap back home. In that decision and that answer, you taught us a lesson. To create a change, you have to be invested. To give not just your money or time, but your heart. You have to give yourself. And that, Rosh Hashiv, is what we see in the mirror today every day. We see it in the Talmidim, in the Younger Light, in the Megiddo Shurim, and in the Rosh Hashiv. People will give their hearts to the Torah. And this is how the yeshiva inspires that kind of devotion from its yedidim, its friends. We give our hearts, and there is nothing that makes us prouder or happier. This is a room filled with people who made that decision, each in their own way, not just to write out a check and sign their name, but to continuously contemplate and reflect on what they can do and what they should do grateful for the privilege of transforming mere money into nitzvahs. It is the greatest deal imaginable, and everyone in this room feels it. So too, I am grateful to see how my partners and colleagues at Meridian have integrated the spirit of giving back into the workplace, and how they serve as outstanding models of integrity and principle, and I thank each and every one of them for allowing me this opportunity to be here and spend the last 10 years doing this Avaydi Shakaydish. I recently heard a story from the Meshkiach Rabdan Segel Shlita, who actually was one of the people that called me and asked me to take on the Achrayas. And I mentioned this many times. It was Mr. Ruben Schroen who said he stands behind me during that time. And I spoke to Rev Dunn today, and I told him that we were going to have the dinner, and he wished me atzlacha. And when I couldn't decide to take this honor, I asked him if I should do it. He said, you have to do it. In the recent story, I told him I was repeating the story, and he said, Rafal, say the story with fire. It was during the elections of the Polish parliament, the Chafetz Chaim directed Askanim to create a political party with a sl slate of Tyra true candidates. The community leaders explained to him that they knew the numbers and there's no chance of the Tyra community winning even a single seat. Shh. 
The Chafetz Chaim was a very practical man, and he knew this as well. Yet he maintained his position. He wanted a party of Shem Retire Mitzvahs. Baffled, they asked him why he wanted to run candidates who would ultimately lose. And the Chafetz Chaim explained, tens of thousands of Yidin would vote for the party. He said, Yidin from all over joining forces under its banner, and that itself is a victory. Because even if they would not win the election, they would still be sending a resounding message to the world that there are tens of thousands of Yidin who are still holding fast to the Tyra. There are tens of thousands of loyal soldiers announcing the Rebbeil Shalom is nish bankrupt. Hashem is not bankrupt, Kevayachal. My day job is in corporate America. Each day I see how the world has fallen a little lower. People confused and clueless. Unable to even locate a moral compass anymore. But here in this yeshiva, in this room, in this Halaga Sifa, we cry out the opposite. The Abish is nish bankrupt. Like Rav Dan said, say it with fire. Look how wealthy he is. Look what he has. This room is our answer to the world outside. So I conclude the Rosh Hashiva Rav Nassim Tzvi by saying thank you. Thank you for letting me into this realm, the special world of the Mi Yeshiva. For letting me touch the coattails of this army, the Ingalite and Bachram of the Yeshiva. And thank you for showing us how what Ashrenu means, just how lucky we are. May Yishchus accompany us and our families at every step. Look out for our family, for your family, your yeshiva, the Torah world, and for your dear, dear friends all gathered here and around the world. May Mashiach come speedy, and when he comes, you will once again walk up the aisle to the front of the base Medrash, Prepare to say Sheklali as you used to. You will face a full base medrash of Gedalim, Rosh Yeshiva, and B'nai Chaira. You will be so proud of what you see. And we all can't wait to see you smile once again. Thank you.